Welcome back to the MMA Plug presented to you by Fan Cave on 98.1 FM, Mile High Sports Radio. I'm your host, Jordan Kurtz. You can give me a follow along online at comments from the peanut gallery. We're going to dive into the LFA 170 preview this weekend. As mentioned, up at the Dobson Arena on Friday the 27th, we have LFA 170 going down in Vail. You can check out that main card on UFC Fight Pass. To transition into our LFA 170 breakdown here, in the main event, we have Harris the Bosnian Silverback Talunzic, who is sporting a 6-1 and one record coming into this contest against Daniel Frunza. Now, Harris is one of the top welterweight prospects that's out there. As mentioned, he does have a 6-1 and one record. He has a tremendous wrestling background, along with polishing up his striking through the years. Formerly at Factory X, now represent Elevation Fight Team. He's a kid who is definitely going to look to go out there and put on a show to try to stamp his ticket to the big show. Also, if you know Harris, you know that Harris is going to definitely call his shot should he get that opportunity with his hand raised after that main event. In the co-main event, you have the hybrid Hayward Charles taking on Mick Tebek Orobai. Sorry, I am butchering that Kyrgyzstani name. I looked it up from Mike Kendall this morning. Shout out to you, the best announcer out there in the game. That's going to be a fight going down in the welterweight division. The hybrid Hayward Charles has been around for a long time. He's fought a lot of the who's who on the Colorado scene on the up and rising ranks. And, you know, he's always a gamer. He's never out of a fight. And he has slick jujitsu that is going to always keep him competitive. And should you get tied up with him, he's dangerous for sure. Also, one thing with, with Hayward Charles is it seems like every single time that you see him, he looks completely different. He's like the, the Marlon Cheeto Vera of the, uh, the Colorado scene. Just a chameleon. Changes looks all the time. You have A.J. Robb taking on Isaac Thompson. A.J. Robb is coming out of the Widefield area, rocking a 6-2 and two record. He kind of trains all around, trains down in New Mexico a lot with Jackson Wink. He's also spent some time out in Vegas, out at Extreme this last camp. He's taken on the Australian rising prospect, the 5-1 and one, Isaac Thompson. So that's going to be a featherweight matchup that you certainly want to keep your eyes on. Going to be a couple of dogs going in there, trying to leave it all out there. There's a lot of other fights, though, to keep your eyes on throughout this card. On the main card, you have Neyra Rep, the Bosnian bombshell, taking on Shannon Clark. We'll be speaking with Neyra on the next segment, so stick around for that. We have Danny Gonzalez of 303 Training Center taking on Jordan Burkholder of Jackson Wink. Danny's a kid who's been competing on the local scene for a long time. We've had him in the 52 80 ring. We've had him uh, in, in the Colorado Combat Club side of things. He's a great kid. Looking forward to seeing him getting back out there. You have the highly anticipated matchup of undefeated Bantamweights in Carlos Rivera coming out of Colorado Springs, taking on Hondo Gutierrez out of Fit NHB down in Albuquerque. This is a potential fight of the night candidate, and it's going down on the prelims. Both of these guys are undefeated, so as our man Ron Crux says, someone's O has got to go. Elevation Fight Team's Keenan Davis was our male amateur fighter of the year this last year on the program, and he'll be making his pro debut against Walter Saragossa out of DCO MMA. Now, Saragossa is a gamer for sure. He competes actively on the grappling scene as well, but Keenan is one of the longest flyweights out there at just under six feet tall. He's dynamic. He switches stances, and he's going to bring a lot of problems into the cage potentially for Saragossa so we're gonna see how he's able to mix it up there with uh with a guy who has some pro experience and yeah it's gonna be a great fight out there you have Austin Waterman taking on Chaz Polson in a middleweight matchup both of these guys are going to be making their professional debuts I've called fights for each of these guys down in the amateur ranks they're both big strong kids I mean this is pure diesel matchup right here you have Polson, the former D1 wrestler, and you have Waterman, who's a second-generation fighter. His old man, Ron Waterman, was a pioneer in the early days of the UFC. In fact, when he fought for us for Colorado Combat Club back in 2022, the UFC film crews were there shooting the acclaimed Where Are They Now docuseries that focused on his pops and just following his, uh, his career and his life since being in the UFC. Spent some time on the pro wrestling scene, was in the WWE for a while, did some other uh, exhibition-style competitions out there, some strongman stuff. So you can check that out on UFC Fight Pass if you're interested at all. 
And finally, we can't go without mentioning Brittany Camozzi. Now, I can't say enough good things about Brittany Camozzi. She's a rock star mom. She's a fighter who puts her heart and soul into her craft. And I just, I, again, I don't have enough positive things to say about Brittany. When I first showed up in the fight gym early 2018, she was one of the first few people that I met and was incredibly nice. And it has just been someone who, you know, we're, it's not a big community in the fight world. A lot of us are the same people at all the different shows and is always a friendly face to talk to and speak with in the process. She's going to be well prepared. Her husband, former UFC veteran Brian Camozzi, is uh, is well acclaimed himself. So they're a fight family through and through. Obviously, then brother in law being friend of the program, Chris Camozzi. They're a fight family, like I say, ladies and gentlemen, all the way through and through. She's representing Genesis Trading Center, and she's taken on Diana Sanchez, who is a, a veteran of both the Invicta and the Kabate Global cages, but. This weekend, she's definitely going to have her hands full when she takes on Brittany Camozzi because I know that Brittany has left no stone unturned for this fight. That about wraps up our LFA segment right there. But I do, before we head out, I want to throw a shout out to the entire LFA crew because they are truly second to none. Everybody from our man Ron Cruck on the broadcast, whoever it is that's his eyes running mate, they mix it up with the color commentary guys, whether it's Alan Joban to Gilbert Melendez to Michael Chiesa. They're all incredible individuals and awesome human beings. All the way at the top, Ed Suarez has been here in studio with us. Can't say enough positive things about Ed, Mark Bieri, Sven Bean, Lisa Bean for all of the uh, event operations. You have the cage side operators with Brandon, with Anthony, Johnny Cards, a tremendous crew there at LFA. They are my favorite organization out there not called the UFC. They are the stepping stone that is where the future is now you truly get a taste of the big show when you're with the legacy fighting alliance and i'm looking forward to what goes down this weekend at the dobson arena up there in Vail for lfa 170 check that show out on ufc fight pass i'm jordan kurtz give me a follow along online at comments from the peanut gallery this is the mma plug presented to you by the fan cave on 98.1 fn mile high sports radio Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. That helps us continue to produce this original MMA content and bring it for you every single week. Tune in to the MMA plug presented by Fan K on 98.1 FM, Mile High Sports Radio.